Hello friends, I hope that you are well. I've got a new type of video for you today, which I thought might be fun and interesting to film because I am planning my next big adventure. I have given my tips a couple of years ago on how to plan a big backpacking adventure and it's a process that I've done, I think five times now. So first was my round the world trip and then there was my Australian working holiday visa and my Central America trip and my New Zealand working holiday visa and then my most recent trip where I went to back to Australia, New Zealand and Sri Lanka. So I've got quite a lot of experience. I've done this quite a lot. I've been home for about three months now and over August I've got a few small trips coming up but I am starting to plan um, what my next big trip's gonna be and I anticipate that I'm gonna be leaving in about November, December. But right now that's undecided and I'm hoping that I can figure it out in this video. I'm going to look at my bucket list, uh, budget, timing, how much I need to save, what my priorities are, all that good stuff. And I may not come to a resolution at the end of this video, but I hope to have a better idea of my options and start thinking about what an actual realistic plan is for me. Bucket list, bucket list. So my bucket list, or more specifically things right at the top of my bucket list and things that I'm really quite desperate to do in the next 12 months. Top of my bucket list to get my dive master. I'm not sure which country yet, but I'm hoping that's something that I can explore in this video. Two to three months living in Bali, six weeks backpacking the Philippines, a snowboarding holiday. Now obviously that last one is very different from all of the others, but I want to go so badly, so I'll try and make it happen, but I'm not holding out too much hope. Right, so how much are all of these going to cost? <laughs> to get my dive master, ugh, it massively depends. It depends on how long I wish to spend doing it, what country I want to do it in, if I want to do it as an internship or just completely not, not as an internship. So I think I want to spend about two months completing my dive master. Four weeks is like the absolute minimum, but I don't wanna be super, super rushed. So I'm thinking two months should be good. If I do it as an internship, it means that I'll be working at the dive shop that I'm diving at. So I will be pretty much working the whole time. I will barely have a day off. It will be exhausting, but it will be a lot of fun. I wouldn't really have time to work on my YouTube channel or anything else at all, but that would cost about a thousand pounds for two months. Um, and that, I think that includes accommodation and all the dives as well. On top of that, I probably would have to pay for my own food and just other expenses. So I anticipate an internship dive master would cost around 1,500 pounds. If I were to not do an internship, from research, I think that would cost me around 2,500 pounds, but that wouldn't include accommodation. It wouldn't include any expenses. I would have a lot more time on my hands because I wouldn't be working at the dive shop. I would just be diving there and getting my qualification. Um, so I would be able to make YouTube videos on the side, um, but, if I'm paying for my accommodation and my food, on top of the expense of actually doing the qualification, I think that would cost me around 3,500 pounds, which is very, very spinny. Okay, so the budget for the dive master is looking in between 1,500 and 3,500. That's a very big difference. I'm definitely leaning towards doing the internship. I think if I did that, I would be behind on my YouTube channel and work for a few months, but. I guess I would just have to film videos in advance or something like that, but it would be fun. It would be exhausting and a lot of work, but that kind of thing excites me. And I, I like the idea of just completely throwing myself into something and being a bit detached from social media for a bit. So that's definitely not a bad thing. Definitely leaning towards the internship a bit more. So four to six weeks in the Philippines backpacking definitely want to go solo unless I manage to find someone who wants to do exactly the same thing as me. But the Philippines is just somewhere I'm dying to go. I don't want to have to compromise for anyone or anything. I just want to do my own thing, be a solo backpacker, very excited about that. So from research, it's best to travel the Philippines in January, February, taking the weather into account. And honestly, that is quite a big thing for me. I, I would love for the weather to be at its best so you can experience the country at its best. Having done a little bit of research, um, it should cost around 1,000 pounds for four weeks traveling around the Philippines, as long as I'm taking the ferries and not planes because the planes are significantly more expensive. They're quicker, but being there for four to six weeks 
is quite a long time so I think I would have time to get the ferries and save a bit of money so for six weeks I would budget £1,500 I think and I do think that if you spend longer than four weeks there you have to get like a special visa apply online I think um, but I'll have to look into that. Now for Bali, I want to live there for a couple of months. So I won't be traveling around very much. Bali is a little bit more expensive than the Philippines, but because I won't be traveling much at all, I anticipate it will cost me about the same, about a thousand pounds a month. I'll do some fun things, but I will be working online a lot. So hopefully earning a bit of money whilst I'm out there. And I'll probably get an apartment, like a long-term apartment to reduce the cost of my living. Um, so I would say, budget would be about two grand for two months. Now on top of that, the snowboarding holiday, the last one I did with Cheryl and James cost 700 pounds, including everything, ski pass, flights, transfers, um, equipment, everything was 700, which was a good deal. But yeah, I'll, I'll put that down for a budget of what that would cost as well. So adding everything up, Dive Master, 1,500, Philippines 1,500 and Bali 2,000, not including the snowboarding holiday because uh, that would be a separate trip anyway and that's the most provisional one. So not including flights, that all comes to 5,000 pounds. I haven't even mentioned that I also want to try and squeeze in Perth and Melbourne on this trip. Don't know if that's gonna happen, don't know if I'm gonna be able to afford it, who knows. So time to be realistic here. There's only one thing that I've got set in stone and that is that I must be in Bali in the middle of April 2019 because it's my sister's wedding and I'm a bridesmaid. So I cannot miss that. So the one thing that definitely makes sense to do for me is to do my two to three months in Bali after the wedding. So April is actually the start of the, the good weather season um, and I don't really want to do it in the wet season and since I will already be in Bali, it just makes sense to stay there. So realistically, that's a thing that's gonna happen. But I think Bali's gonna be the last place that I go to. So we'll put Bali in here. So say I was to start in the new year, at the beginning of 2019, that gives me three and a half months of travel before I get to Bali. And realistically, I could fit in Philippines and my dive master in that amount of time, which fits quite nicely. I really want to do my dive master in Mexico. However, being this side of the world, wanting to do the Philippines and being in Bali, it really just doesn't make sense to go all the way over there. The flights are significantly more expensive and it's just, it just, it just doesn't seem to make sense, unfortunately. I did ask on my Instagram some other places in Southeast Asia, which you guys recommended, and a few of you said Borneo and the Komodo Islands. Those are the ones that stood out to me the most, like, oh, okay, maybe I'll consider going there. Um, the other option is to do it in the Philippines, but I wanna do somewhere new. I, I wanna travel as much as I can and go to new places. So yeah, I want to do it somewhere where I've never been. So I'm going to look at flight prices now and budget it all out. I wouldn't book these flights until a couple of months beforehand in case my plans changed or new opportunities came up. Like I never know what's gonna happen. So I don't like to book my flights really far in advance. But it's good to get a realistic idea of how much things are looking like they're gonna cost. What's a realistic plan for me to, um, look forward to to kind of plan for i guess i got all these prices from um skyscanner by the way um just like did a little quick uh, flexible search to see roughly how much the flights are kind of going for london to philippines one way is about 350 pounds very good philippines to komodo islands in indonesia via bali is about 100 pounds which is not bad or philippines to Borneo is 30 pounds. Looking on the map, they're actually really close. How cheap is that? It's so good. Now, just for the humor, Philippines to Mexico, having done a little bit of research, that is 850 pounds. And that would just be one way. I'd have to then get back to Southeast Asia. So that would be forking out, you know, close to two grand for return flights to Mexico. Komodo Islands then to Bali. Uh, from research, what do I have? About 50 pounds, not bad. I mean, they're both in Indonesia. Um, and then Borneo to Bali, what do we have? About 80 pounds, not bad either. So it does just make so much sense 
to stay in Southeast Asia for my dive master. Um, it will just be so much cheaper in the long run. Um, I can always go diving in Mexico, maybe get a dive master job in Mexico after I've got the dive master, who knows? So flights to Komodo Islands are marginally more expensive than Borneo on that route, but there's not much in And it. then obviously I have to allow to get back home from Bali to London right at the end of the trip. Um, and from research, that is no more than about 350 pounds as well one way. So all those flights added up is about 850 pounds, which was actually a lot less than I was expecting. And that's obviously not going to Mexico and not including going to Perth or Melbourne either, but maybe there's a bit of flexibility there to go there if I wanted and had a bit of extra cash. But 5,000 plus 850, and I would definitely round that up to 6,000 because it's always good to round up when you're doing your budgeting, I feel like. Um, that's realistic. If I left right at the beginning of January and then I would be hitting Philippines Jan, Feb time, which is one of the things that I wanted to do, um, considering I already have a bit of savings, that gives me, what, what are we in August, September, October, November, December, five months. Considering I do already have a bit of savings, that's definitely a realistic goal for me, which really, really excites me. That doesn't include the snowboarding trip and it also doesn't include Perth and Melbourne. However, if I work hard, I may make more money and then I may have time unless any companies want to send me on a snowboarding trip. I will make a sick vid for you at your server. Especially if I do the internship. I think if I were to not do the dive master internship, it would just cost so much more money and I probably wouldn't be able to afford it. But yeah, no, that's exciting. Like I, I can actually do it. And don't get me wrong, like I'm gonna need to work hard, like really hard and really focus on saving and not spending in order for me to do this trip. But these are the things at the top of my bucket list. I want to do this so bad. I know if you've been following me for a while, like I've said, I want to work in Bali. I want to backpack the Philippines. I said that I wanted to do that last year and I just didn't. So yes, I need to do it. I will do it. Um, and I'm excited that it's going to get done. I reckon adding Perth or Melbourne into the mix would cost an extra four or 500 pounds for the flights. I I'd have myself sorted once I'm out there. But I wouldn't decide that until closer to the time. And yeah, like I said, I'm not definitely going to do this plan that just came up because I don't know how my finances will go. I don't know what new opportunities might come my way. I'm may discover somewhere completely new in the next couple of months which I'm just like drop everything I'm going there now that's definitely the kind of thing that I would do but I feel good it makes me feel really good to start planning this and putting it down on paper because it just makes it seem so much more realistic and makes me excited and motivated to actually want to save my money and not just spend it all and being a freelancer I'm gonna need to be disciplined and probably a bit of hustling to get some more work in but I'm excited and I'm motivated and I'm, I'm up for the challenge. And weirdly to some of you, this part of the process of traveling, I actually really enjoy. I, I, I like, I really enjoy being up for the challenge of saving my money and just seeing this as all part of the process. Um, and I definitely recommend you to try and change your mindset to see it that way too. Cause I know a lot of you tell me like, I'm really struggling to save and I'm getting really down and stuff like, no, just see it as motivation and a challenge and a time to research those places that you really want to go and just get excited. I know that I am. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you've made it to the end, well done. Don't even know how long this is gonna be. Let me know what your travel plans are. Where are you thinking of going in the next few months? What's your next big backpacking adventure? Do let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye.